Hello, this is a sand casting tutorial. So if you want the ingredients or the tools used, please read the description. I used a normal mug to measure out my sand to clay ratio. Nine mugs of sand to one mug of clay. I then used some water on the clay because my clay was quite hard and this softened it up, which helped to mix. If you add too much, then the mixture will become too wet. I try to work out what 1% of black treacle would be, and I think it was roughly one dessert spoon. If you put your container of black treacle or molasses on a scales, then tear the scales and then remove your one dessert spoon of molasses from the container, then the scales will show you a minus number of how much you've removed. And then you need to mix all of them up together. After that, you need to slowly add water to get to the right consistency. And there's two ways of determining whether you've got the right consistency. First is you roll the sand up into a ball and you push your finger through it. It should split into three separate parts. And the second is to squeeze your hand with some and to break it in half and it should break away clean. If it's too sticky, then you've added too much water and if it's too dry, it will tend to crumble more. Ideally, you would have one tub for your mixing of the sand to get the right amount of water and then some dry sand, the same mixture so you can add that in case you've made it too wet. Now it's time to repair your tin cans, so you need to make a hole so you can get your tin snips or scissors or however you're planning on cutting them in. And you need to cut out the bottom of the tin can and you also need to cut it in half so that the original top and the bottom can fit together. Cans have a lip on them so they are designed to stack on top of one another and this is why we're using tin cans so we can stack them together once we've made the mold. You then take the piece of the can which has the inside lip and you start filling that one up first. So you put a little bit of sand and you start pressing it in. You want to use the inside lip first because if you use the outside lip then you wouldn't be able to place the tin can together for when you're making your model because the inside lip obviously goes inside. Then you fill this up and you press down firmly. You need to fill it up on a flat surface so that you get a nice flat finish on the top. And then you can put a little bit more sand around the edges because the lip stops the sand from going into those sections when you're filling it up. And then you can carve out a little hole um, depending on how big the model that you plan on pressing into it is will depend on how much sand you want to remove. And then you take your model and you put some releasing powder, so talcum powder, on it and you can brush this on and you can flick the brush with some talcum powder on to make a nice even surface around the entire thing. And after you've pressed your piece into the sand, you then want to put some talcum powder on the sand that's visible around your model. And you want to press your model in quite hard so that it hopefully will take the imprint of the sand. You will want to put talcum powder on 
both sides of the model. So here's me putting it on both sides. I just measured to make sure that they still fit together once you've pushed all the sand in and also to ensure that your lines mark meet up. So you need to put some lines on your tin cans to ensure that when you take them apart and put them back together, you'll get the same orientation of both sides. So here I am adding the talcum powder again. So after you've added a nice surface of talcum powder, you've then put on the second layer and you slowly put a little bit of sand and you start to fill up from the other side. You want to make sure that when you're pressing it, you're not moving the sand from side to side and you're only pressing down. So it's an even pressure all the way around. It's got to be quite a hard pressure, but if you accidentally push too hard and move the sand, then it will take away some of the talcum powder off the surface and then the sand will stick to the surface of your model. Once you've filled it up, you can take it off and you have a nice negative of your model. If it's come out well, then it means that your sand's obviously at the right consistency. If it sticks too much, then it means that your sand is too wet. And if you're making multiples, then you can then line up the next tin. If you have the tins are the same, then you can line up another one on the same bottom that you've already used, and then you can make multiple. I made six of this particular model. When I was doing some of these, I didn't have any spare sand, so some of my sand was too damp, and so I did get some faults. This is me making sure that I've added a new line to this top section so that I'll be able to line up the, the cans again. As you can see, some of the sand stuck to the model in the horn and I felt like I could fix these particular faults. So I got some wet sand, the same mixture, so it's sand and the rest of it, just with a lot more water. And then I added that to the sand and built it up. And after it dried a bit, I then could come back and carve that away. I'm using the model with the sand still in place as a reference to where I need to add a little bit more sand to my cast model. You can add it with a any tool. Sometimes small brushes are quite good, but I'm using a clay modeling tool. You could also just model directly into the sand and make a one-off negative. And then to remove the model, you can just slightly pull it up in different edges so that it's loose from the sand. You can then uh, lightly hold it and turn it over and the model should just fall off. Or you can lift it up. So this particular bit of sand was a bit too wet and sticky so it's quite a bit of the sand stuck to the model on the head and I fixed that and when you're doing the other side if you're doing multiples then you can replace the model back in the good side and then put the tin can back on and redo the process so you can just do a load of one side and a load of another and then you have the set that you need. It's also tends to come out the model and the negative tends to come out better when you're pushing the sand on to the model. So this way around, 
rather than pushing the model into the sand. The last step after you've made your moulds is to drill a hole into the model so you can have a sprue, so you can have a place to pour the metal in. Luckily on my model I had a flat surface so that was quite an easy decision of where to put it. It depends on your model where you want to put your sprue. And then you can use a tool to clean up the edge and make it so there's no loose sand. You'll want to make sure that the metal can flow in easily and any loose sand will come out in the metal when you're pouring it and come into the model. Then you can leave these to dry for a week or longer. They need to dry before you pour the metal in. Here's my setup. So I have a gas forge, which I'm melting down some scrap brass into and here are my things. I used wire to stop the tops from rising up when you pour the metal in because it's not the tightest of seal obviously and the molten brass is quite heavy so you could push the entire top of the model up which would cause it to overflow. One of mine did overflow. That's because my seal wasn't good enough. Not how you're meant to be. Oh, I guess this is a bit too hot, I think. Yeah. A bit too hot. Oh, not necessarily enough for that last one, but we've made it just about. And that's the equipment I have for casting. So I cast them and they do sometimes have a little bit of fire around it, but that's natural. You should put sand around the area to stop any metal which comes out getting in contact with concrete because that could cause it to expand and break off and explode a little bit. And here are the six that I managed to make. That one's one that overflowed. The middle one isn't very good, it's quite rough, but the rest of them are all right. So I left them to cool for a while and then I took my modeling tool to try and remove them from the sand. The sand is quite hard at this stage, it being dry it becomes harder and especially after you've poured the metal in it's quite hot so it sort of solidifies the sand a bit more. It is easier to get the sand off once you've got the tin can off. You could just cut the tin can. It's up to you isn't it? So after you've cleaned it up you're left with this, which still has the sprue attached. And then you can cut that off with an angle grinder or a hacksaw or anything really. And then you can grind that back and patina it. And there you go. Your finished piece. Thank you for watching.